this is Cody, and you are tuned to B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios. We've got an, another special edition of the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya. On the Skype, we have Deirdre Friel. You know her from New Amsterdam, from Second Act, from Broadway, from a million other things. We're so excited to have you here. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thanks for Woo! having me. Yeah. Maya, take it away, girl. Okay, so um, who or what inspired you to start acting? Oh, wow, that's such a good question. You want to know who inspired me? Honestly, um, my uncle, he's passed away now, but he um, was an actor. And when I was a kid, he could tell that I, I had some talent for it. And so uh, I, you know, I would do the plays and things in school and he would help me out, like, learn my lines or he would... Um, you know, give me like singing lessons and things. And then uh, he was the one who finally sort of talked my parents into, you should, you should probably let her do this when she gets to college. And I did. It's all thanks to him. My uncle Rich, Rich Rella. Oh, cool. Um, so do you have any upcoming projects that you can tell us about? Um, nothing I can talk about yet that's coming up. I can tell you something I shot recently, I think. I'm in the new series, um, uh, Tales of the City on Netflix. I have a really little tiny bit in that on the first episode. And I just shot something for the new Apple TV network that I can't talk about <gasps> yet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I can't talk about it yet, but that's a really cool project I'm really proud to be a part of. Um, nothing else I don't think I can mention and I think New Amsterdam may start filming again in July that's all I can say about that oh cool I love that show do you really yeah yeah, so, yeah. why do you like yeah. it so much no there's a lot of reasons but <laughs> I love that I just love um, that Max is that he like wants to change the way the medical system is and yeah yeah and Maya's had yeah. a few medical experiences so you know yes. she's saying that might be an okay thing yes you guys are well versed in the medical system right <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm very proud of our show too and I I can't say enough I'm sure you're gonna have questions about it but I can't say yeah. enough great things about um that group of people it's a really special group of people cool um so I d well, I was wondering if you have any fun stories or memories from filming either New Amsterdam or Second Act or I both. do. <laughs> I do have stories from both. So which one do you want to hear first? Uh, New Amsterdam. Let's see. Well, everyone there, everyone there is really nice. I'm very, very lucky that whole team is really nice the actors are of course wonderful people but the crew is the best the writers the executive producers everybody our showrunners like everyone's so nice so my stories mainly from New Amsterdam are just how nice everybody is um I'm trying to think of Anupam is always really terrific and very funny he makes me feel really really good about myself and um I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of like a really sparkly, great, funny story. I'll tell you that, you know, my character is uh, the, the coffee girl, right? I'm the yeah. cafe barista. And so the first day I got to the set, it's this very big, expensive set. And my main area of the set is the cafe. So they have this big, like, I don't even know, several thousand dollar fancy coffee machine. And so they said, you know, do you know how to use this? I say, no, I don't know how to use a fancy coffee machine. So they had the props guy come over, Chris. And Chris was like, this is how you do all, the, you do this and you push these buttons and you can do this and you make a latte and you can make a cap. So I'm trying to go, okay, okay, okay. Like, and now we still have to do our scenes and stuff, but I'm trying to memorize how to do 400 things on this machine. And then we finally get to shoot the scene and I go, I, I was thinking I could do these, this thing, right? So they go, great. So we go to do it and the sound people go, because that's going to make too much noise. So all I ended up doing was like taking a thing of coffee beans and like <laughs> what's called tamping them. Because so every time I do scenes, I can't I can't use the machine because it's going to make too much noise. So I had to go through this whole like stressful training, but then I never had to use it. 
Thank goodness. So, <laughs> I would be the person who would probably break it. Um, but now you make the best coffee around, so. No, I still to make terrible coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get hired for my coffee skills, you guys. <laughs> uh, for a second act, every day was so much fun. I'll tell you, Jennifer Lopez and Leah Remini were two of the best, most fun people to work with in the world. And you know that the two of them in real life are best friends. Yeah. So, right. So every day with, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, I, maybe it's me. I'm every now and then I hear like a little voice poking through. So tell me if I, if I'm talking over somebody, Okay. Um, but, uh, so Jen and Leah every day would be like, you know, uh, like fooling around with each other and giving each other a hard time and like let, so it was just always this really positive environment on set um, and uh, oh I could tell you a slightly embarrassing story about myself <laughs> sure would you like to hear that would that sure. be good um, so I I got hired for the job and it was pretty fast and furious I had to go for a, a wardrobe fitting right where they tried they had like you know a hundred different outfits that they said what do you think your character would wear? This or this? So I'm trying on all these outfits. I guess Jennifer had was supposed to have a wardrobe fitting or maybe had had one earlier and was coming back to finish hers. So when she was on her way over, they said, we have to kind of flip the schedule around. We have to finish her wardrobe fitting tomorrow. Sure, no problem. But of course, you know, Jennifer Lopez is on her way. And so everybody's trying to turn the studio over very quickly. So I'm trying to get changed in this little corner with just like a little bit of privacy you know and I'm like getting out of one outfit and you know that gym class clothes change thing you try to do where so nobody <laughs> sees you and so I'm just about to pull my pants up <laughs> and there's Jennifer Lopez standing in front of me so the first time I met Jennifer Lopez I was in my drawers and I pulled up my pants and I went hello Jennifer Lopez I said I said hi I'm Deirdre and she said hi I'm Jen and I said I'm going to be in this movie with you on Monday and she went oh yes hi <laughs> and I adjusted myself and left the room as red as your shirt. Nice. <laughs> That's a good. So there you go. I haven't told that on any other interview yet. That's exclusive to my. Ooh, the scoop. Because <laughs> you got the scoop on my drawers. The, the scoop on how you met J Lo. Oh my gosh, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. That is so great. Um, yeah. Um, so is there one project you've been a part of that's really stood out to you? You know, at the risk of uh, being repetitive, New Amsterdam has been really special for me. Uh, I think that uh, we, had a, we had a big party when the season wrapped, right? Do you know what that means if something wraps, like when it ends? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like pretty normal that if after everyone's worked really hard on a season, they have a, they have a party and stuff for you and... Um, our showrunner, this really wonderful guy named David Schulner, uh, he gave a speech and said, our show's really special because it takes three things for a show to be a success. People have to want to watch it. Um, you have to like going to work every day and you will have to feel like you're making a difference. And he said, most of the time, uh, if you're working on a project, you get one of those things. If you're lucky, you get two of those things, you know? But really at New Amsterdam, I, I really honestly feel like we have all three of those things. We all really love each other and support each other and everybody's really wonderful people. I think, as you very aptly put, the show really is trying to speak to a lot of inequities or issues in our medical system, which I think is really important. And um, people seem to like it and want to watch it. So it's very special to me that I, I'm lucky I get to go to work and do something that I really feel like is doing a cool good service is that a good answer yeah okay oh. <laughs> Deirdre I have a funny request for you we always like yeah. to take pictures of our friends on our TV when we have them on so we're gonna take a quick picture Maya you need to smile too okay go for it we're taking a portrait right now <laughs> Oh, perfect. Oh, now Sheila's mom. I mean, Sheila needs to step up and get that oh, picture yeah, as well. Come in, come in. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Sheila's getting the photo. And then we're back to the interview. Okay. <laughs> Look for yourself all over social media. Oh, please. Yeah, tell me how I can, you know, tag this and all those great things, too. Yeah, absolutely, okay. we will. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. 
Yeah. Um, so, is there a certain line from any of the characters you've played that has always stuck with you? Hmm. Uh, is there a certain line from any of the characters I've played that has stuck with me? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean... On the spot like this, I can think of some things I said in New Amsterdam that I thought were were good. Um, let me think about that one. Okay. Nothing's jumping out at me. I've never had been asked that question before, so it's not like an answer I had right off the right off the top of my head. You know, I've gotten to do some Shakespeare too, so you know, there's some really good. He he wrote a few good things if you haven't heard of them. So, you know, I got to think about that for a minute. Okay, I'll come back Thank to you. that question. Yes, come back to it. I'll try to let the back of my brain run on that. Okay. Yeah. Cody, can you remind me to go back to that question? Okay, yes. <laughs> Check. Thank Got you. It. I am, I'm like her secretary. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. Got Everyone it. needs a good extra set of hands. Yeah. <laughs> you have producers and executive producers and assistant producers. Directors, That's right. All it's behind so the true. scenes on my show, yeah. <laughs> um... So, what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not acting? Uh, I teach a lot. I love to teach. I do teach some acting. Um, I do teach some singing. Um, so, I do a lot of teaching and that sort of stuff. And then sort of like a public speaking. Some teaching with that I like to do. Uh, I play music. I write music. Um, I compose music for like some groups. So I love doing that. Uh, very recent, like the last year or two, I started, I play piano very well. I sing pretty well. I started teaching myself ukulele last year. Oh, and I think I'm going to take guitar lessons, actually. I was just like sort of looking into that very recently. Like, <laughs> I think I want to learn a guitar. So I like doing a lot of that stuff. Um, I have a lot of plants. I'm, you, I'm outside right now. I have a little tiny patio in New York City so you could see I have like a little bit of Ooh. garden oh that's just nice just a little bit yeah. I have more plants inside only a couple of them out here it's one of my little trees behind me whom I love <laughs> um, so I like gardening and cool. yeah spending time with family and friends I like to go to the movies I like museums so if you're thinking on taking me on a date, Maya, these are things I like to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just know what to do when you come through Denver and visit us. Oh, yeah. I've been to Denver before. A friend of mine got married uh, kind of near Aspen. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, I think your state is gorgeous. <clears throat> we think so, too. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so are there any new shows that you're binge watching? Oh, you know, I'm pr I'm like so behind the Times magazine, um, <laughs> but because I think there's just so many good shows out now that it's hard to yeah. stay up. And I and I am a binge watcher, so when I start watching something, I don't watch like the only things I watch every week are things like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. You should just end this interview now. I'm like, so <laughs> um, but do you know what? I'm. I really. I just finished rewatching Breaking Bad, which is not child appropriate. Nobody watching this interview should watch that. <laughs> we, we always say, just you know, check with mom or dad, get, and you know, check with mom or dad, and then also still, it's not appropriate for you yet. Right. right. <laughs> um, for young adults, if, if we have so young excellent. adults, I, I also started rewatching it because one of our people in New Amsterdam is was one of the DPs on. That show, and but I'm just watching also another show called Better Call Saul, which is a spinoff of that. Which I, I love think that is show. So good. <laughs> I think it's so good. Uh, I love Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think that show is hysterically funny. <laughs> Me too. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh, it would be my dream to get to work on that show. I think those people are so funny. Um, uh, what else? I like shows that make me laugh. Yeah. I like Blackish a lot. I think that show is excellent. And, and just really real and talks about real family stuff. Um, 
Uh, I just watched, yeah, then I just, I also watched Chernobyl on HBO, which also you shouldn't watch. It's super depressing. Um, <laughs> so I like vacillate between things that are going to make me like massively depressed and then laugh a lot. That's like how I find balance. The peaks and the valleys, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. there's nothing in between. I'm just <laughs> scarier. Yeah. Now you said you're behind the times. You just listed off like all the hot shows. I think you're uh, ahead of the times now. Yeah. I did I do okay? Yeah, oh, I think you're good. gosh. I always feel like. So when I'm when I teach, I teach a little bit at NYU New York University, and my students are sometimes like, "Deirdre, you're so behind the times." I'm <laughs> like, "I know, I'm so old fashioned." <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Just in life, in general. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. My biggest pet peeve. Uh, men who don't have manners. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I am a hundred percent a feminist. I am ladies live. Also, open the door for me. I'm gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That's yeah. Great, great but just right any there. people who don't have manners in general. But as you know, yeah. as a lady who has gone through the world and dated a bit, you sometimes I want to be like, gentlemen. Wake up. <laughs> I like the advice. Yes. It's a good Thank reminder. You, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, so if you could meet any fictional character, um, that's not a superhero because that's my next question. <laughs> um, who would it be? Any fictional character that's not a superhero. Correct. Yeah. Whoa, Maya. Do you, how do you come up with these questions? These are really like really phenomenal question like existential yes like majorly <laughs> any fictional character who's not a superhero well i think i right off the top of my head i'm i'm not gonna second guess myself i would like to meet dorothy gale from kansas i'd like oh. to know a little bit more about the land of oz <laughs> i think i would like to know a little more about that especially that we're in pride month i feel like i'm a little on theme with that so i feel good about that answer and are you going to ask me about a superhero one next? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I ask it slow. I'm trying to cue it up in my head. Okay. Um, if you could be any superhero, who would you be and why? I have to be the superhero? See, I was preparing to answer the superhero I would want to meet. meet. <laughs> who would be Bucky Barnes, because Sebastian Stan is a close yeah. click friend of mine. Oh, nice. So I would meet him, and then I would say to him, what is it like to have Sebastian Stan play you? <laughs> Uh, if I could be a superhero, I think I think I would totally want to be Supergirl because yeah. you get all of the superpowers, all of them. Like you don't have to pick. Like, do you want to fly or be invisible? No, I want to do all of them. <laughs> yes, that was a smart move on on their part there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hello, Stanley. Right. Good work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I just have to say, actually, my sister is a huge uh, fan of Sebastian Stan. He will be so happy to hear that. He's the most wonderful guy in the whole world. I've known Sebastian for a long time. We went to school together. And um, he's the same exact dude he now as he was then. And I'm so proud of him for all the things he's accomplished, but most for that. Now, does he have manners? Cool. M more manners than you can count. Oh, oh. that's so good. He's, he's a truly wonderful person. Like, you know, and, and he would have every right to be uh, different because he has to deal with a lot of things, but he's not. He's like super down to earth, real dude. That's I cool. I love him with all my heart. Right on. Yeah. I'll tell him your sister's a big fan. <laughs> He'll love it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I um, I think when I tell her that, she's not going to be breathing. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'll, try to, I'll send him a link for this. You guys will send me all this info, and I'll send him this link. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Of course. Um, so if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? I think I'm like, you are a very good interviewer. First of all, this is not the first time you've done this. Um, you know, I'm like really on theme with Pride Month right now. So I think I'm going to go with Diana Ross. I'm coming out. Not just like 
<laughs> I because I just think it's it makes me feel so good when I hear it. And like anytime I put it on in the morning re- recently and I'm like dancing out of my bed like because it just feels really great, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like positive and fun. <laughs> I like that. What about you, Maya? I want to know what song you would play for your entrance. Um, Do you have answers for all these questions yourself? That's what I want to know. Um, most of them, yeah. <gasps> of course you do. You're like that chick. <laughs> What's your song? What's your entrance theme? Uh, well, she thinks I'm playing yours. <laughs> right? Like, you can't help it. It's like, she yeah. doesn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Song. yeah. Um... <laughs> Probably So We Did by Brandon Michael Hall. Of course, he's a rapper. He was in, he's in uh, God Friended Me. Yeah, and he was Uh in The Mayor. And he was in The Mayor. And Search Party. And why do you, why do you, I was on Search Party too. (gasps) Um, Why would you have that as your theme song? Um, Or your entrance song, I think was the question um, you asked me. Because... I don't know. It's just one of my favorite songs. And to me, it has like, uh, for me, it has like a deeper meaning. Tell her, so, tell her what it's kind of about, the big motto of the song. Well, Please. I, I feel like, so in the song, he says like, they told me that I couldn't, so I did. And so to me, that just means like um, showing people that you can do it. And uh. Yeah. I like you, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Send me a link Thank to that you. song, too. Okay, I will. I yeah. got it. Oh, link to Thank song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, secretary. You I was going to say, do you, have your, do you have your girl on it? Got it. <laughs> She's <Check>. on. <laughs> your gal yeah. Friday. Good. Yeah. Um, so, do you have a motto or quotation that you live by? You. I finally have an answer to one of your questions. I do. Um, there's a really a famous theater artist. His name was Emil Zola. And at the bottom of every email I send, message I send, I have a quote by him that says, the artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without the work. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. Have to I feel really that. strongly about, doesn't matter how gifted you are, you know, like, or that expression, the, God helps those who help themselves, you know what I mean? But it's that idea of, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, then what's the point, right? Yeah. So, and you're doing that. You're developing your gifts. You're very gifted at interviewing. Thank you. So you're you. reaching out. You are. You're very good at this. <laughs> so you're, like, Thank reaching you. out and, and meeting people, and you're using that. And, and look at how you're sharing that with so many people. Like, that's such a wonderful thing that you've used your gifts to do thank you That's yeah awesome. you're my hero i love it <laughs> thank you yeah um so before i go to my last question <laughs> uh i remembered to go back to the other one ah, <laughs> yes the line she's do not you gonna remember, let you out of it yeah do you remember <laughs> to th- did yes. you remember the whole interview to think about this question i know and i but i was answering other hard questions i thought <laughs> i know I right easier question no no hold on i'm gonna think well, remind us the question, Maya. Okay. Um, For people like me that were like, squirrel! Thanks. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. No, that's good. Um, is there a certain line from any character you've played that's always stuck with you? Yes. Now, I'm think of it. I got to do... I lived in London for a little while, and I got to do a little bit of um, King Lear... And I was Goneril, and she's like the oldest sister, if you don't know King Lear. So she's like not, you know what, I think in this age of feminism, she's an ambitious person. She's kind of cast often as like the bad, like the vil- like not a nice person. But I actually believe that she just was trying to keep a hold on things. And she looks at her husband. She keeps trying to tell her husband to do this thing. You have to do this thing for me. You're the man. Do the thing. She looks at him and she goes, marry your manhood mew. Like, oh my gosh, you're not a man. You're a cat. (laughs) How about that? That's good. Oh, thanks. It only took me a whole interview to think of it. (laughs) 
Um, so my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Who do I consider to be a real life superhero and why? Um, I have a couple of them and they're family members of mine and I'm thinking of a couple of family members without going into too many things that are going through some, some hard things and watching people that I love go through something hard and it might be health, it might be personal, it might be work related, whatever, but people who can um, look at a problem and say, no, the problem isn't big, I'm big. I'm bigger than this problem is. I, I really admire that spirit. I have a, a couple of family members who I would say that about. Hmm. Now, I'm gonna leave that there so I can be a little mysterious. That's also <laughs> a tip yes. for your dating life. Leave a little mystery <laughs> and then <I> walk away. <laughs> that, was, that was our actual last question. What are your dating tips? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. No, mystery. that's a whole other interview and also yeah. it will be not good. <laughs> oh my. Um, well, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for having me, Maya. This was so much fun. Yeah. I hope we can do it again sometime. Yeah, me too. Yeah? Okay, yeah. good. Let's you know how to get in touch with me, so maybe end of season two we'll we'll see what happens with Ella. I'm not allowed to <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh, you almost gave something away, a little scoop again. No, I, I can't. I gave my a whole scoop already about my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you well, guys, this was so wonderful. I appreciate it. Well, thank yeah. you for spending so much time with us. We yeah. will hopefully catch up with you again soon. And anytime you're in Denver yeah. or Colorado, come by and say hi to us, okay? I yeah. will for sure. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.